Hello everyone, welcome to the, uh, the class today. And today uh, what I want to do is uh, introduce you to a lot of the openings, briefly introduce you to most of the openings that we have, the most popular openings. And then we're also going to do lots of tactical ideas, uh, sacrifices, deflections. Uh, we're going to do double checks and many different positions. Uh, if you were here last Sunday, something similar we're going to work on and some other new things as well. First, I want to introduce you to the uh, 10 openings that you can play with the white pieces as white, okay? So when you open up the game with the d4 in this position, and this is a move, for example, that I play. And black can play approximately 10 different openings. So I would like to introduce you the first few moves of each opening, okay? So the first opening against d4 is d5. So when you start the game, you should play either d4 or e4, because these are the two best moves in this position. So I will also go over some e4 opening. But first, let's start out with d4. When you play d4, black plays d5, c4, d takes c4. Anybody familiar with this opening? Raise your hand if you're familiar. Yes? Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I play it every single time I play it. Uh-huh, OK, good. I mean, you can play like this. That's good. OK, let's see. All right, yes, what's the name of this opening? Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit, but you have to say something else. Queen's Gambit accepted. accepted. OK, this is the Queen's Gambit accepted opening because he's accepting. He's taking the pawn. So remember, when he, you take the pawn, this is called Queen's Gambit accepted. OK? I will be checking this, so I want everybody to pay attention, OK? So now there is a very nice trap that I want to show you, and you can use this actually to win some games if your op opponent is not familiar with it. So you play e3. Now you're trying to take the pawn here. The best move in this position is to play knight f6 and just kind of give up the pawn and just try to develop. But some players will try to protect this pawn because they, w they win a pawn, they try to protect it. But this is a bad move already. Now you play a4 putting pressure on b5. And now if you place a6, it's bad because you capture. And black captures, you're winning the rook. OK? So that's why it's not a good idea to play a6. Now, most likely your opponent will play c6 here. And now you take. And now. I have a question for you here. White to play, can you find a winning move here? White is winning a piece now if you find the right move here. It's not so easy to see because it's a kind of an unusual move, but black weakened his position here. Especially, he weakened uh, the diagonal. And as you can see, you need to find a piece that is not protected and try to attack that piece here. It's a, it's a nice trap here, and white is winning a piece. OK, let's give you a little bit more time. Try to see how can you, what can you play here to win the piece. OK, yes. The queen. queen where? Queen to f3. Very good. Queen f3. And now you're attacking the rook because diagonal is very weak. And now he cannot really protect this rook. If he plays bishop b7, you can just take the bishop. So it's not good for him. So he, he has to play knight c6. But now you simply take, check, bishop d7 and queen a6. And white is up a piece in this position. OK? If you, if you take the rook, see, the queen is already protecting it. That's why. So you just go here, and you're up a knight here. So let's go back again. And take a look again. So this, the name of this opening is, what's the name? Queens. Queens, uh-huh. Remember, there, there, we're going to have two, two different. It's similar. Yes. Queens accepted. Queens Gambit accepted, OK? So remember, this is the Queens Gambit accepted opening because when you take the pawn, that's the accepted, OK? Next opening I show you, it's going to be the Queens Gambit declined where he's declining taking the pawn. 
So again, when he takes here, you play e3. The idea behind this move is to protect your center and also open the diagonal for the bishop. Now he plays b5. You play a4 attacking. He plays, if he plays a6, you simply capture, captures, and you win the rook. And if he plays c6, you take he takes and queen f3. It's a very strong move. It's a trap, and I actually won some games myself also with this idea. So, but since we're on this opening, I want to just ask you a question here in this position. For example, in this position, white to play. Can you find a winning move here? The idea here is double attack. You make a move and you attack two different pieces at the same time, and it's very difficult to defend. So now, if wh white to play and win here. Okay, yes? Queen to f3. Very good move. Queen to f3, because again, same idea. You sh in this opening, you should always look for this move, queen f3. This is the second time we see that this is a good idea, because now, we are attacking on f7 and also attacking the rook at the same time. So this idea called fork and double attack. Okay? When you're attacking two things at the same time, fork or double attack here. And white is winning. Okay? So let me check again one more time. <coughs> when he takes, what's the name of this opening? Let's raise your hand if you know it. Raise your hand if you know the opening, okay? Yes. <laughs> and ex ex accepted, okay? Queen's Gambit accepted, okay? Most of you are already familiar with this opening. Now, I want to move on to the next opening, okay? The next opening here is e6. And since he's not taking the pawn, what's the name of this opening? Excellent. Queen's Gambit declined. Okay? This is another very popular opening, and many world champions play this defense. Sometimes I also play myself in, a, in the tournaments. So in this opening, white usually plays knight out, knight c3, knight f6, and you want to get your knight out to f3. Question for you, is it a good idea to play this move immediately here? No. No. Why? Why it's not a good idea to play this move? Because it looks like a normal move just protecting the center. But why you think this is not a good idea? It blocks all the bishops. Very good. Very good point. Because you don't want to block this bishop. You always want to get this bishop out first and then play e3. Okay? So that's why you want to you don't want to play this move e3, okay? So what you want to do first, you have to do this move first and then play e3. Which move you have to play first here for white? Raise your hand. If you know it, raise your hand. Yes? Queen to a4. You could play that move, but usually what you want to do in the early stage of the game, you don't want to develop the queen too early. First get your minor pieces out. And again, minor pieces are your knights and bishops. Get your minor pieces out, uh, castle, and then think about development. What I want to do here, I want to go back for a moment and just go over the first five steps. If you were in my class, um, I've been teaching already a few weeks, and uh, I talk about these steps a lot. So I want you to be familiar if, let's say, you're first time. And uh, there are five very important steps when you start the game. The first step is to control the center, okay? This four squares, so I will quickly review the steps with you, and some of you are first time here, so you will know also. So when you start the game, you have to control the center. So that's why I recommend either to play this move or this move, because it helps you to control the center. So we control the center. Now, second step, what is second step? Okay, yes. Very good. Develop minor pieces, and minor pieces are your knights and bishops. Remember, right? Step number three, 
What is step number three? Okay? Castle. Castle. Because safety of the king is very important, okay? You can say it's your number one priority when you play because you could be off lots of material, but if your king is getting checkmated, then you lose the game. So it's not about winning lots of material, but you have to make sure your king is safe first. So after that, now we finish step number three. It's castle. Now, step number four. Very important. What is step number four? Yes. Finish development, including major pieces. And what are the major pieces? Queen and rooks. Queen and rooks. Okay. Uh, usually we don't develop the king. We just castle with the king because king is, uh, yeah, just we have to make sure we always protect the king. Okay. So next step, step number four is complete the development, including the major pieces. Something like this. Now I will show you. This is just an example of a game where white is completing his development. Usually you, in order to complete the development, you move the queen up and then you put your rooks in the middle, okay? That's how you complete the development of the major pieces. And only after you do that, what is step number five? After you finish the control of the center, and now step number five? Start the attack, okay? You only start the attack now when you finish the development. And usually the way you start the attack, you advance your pawns in the center if you can, or you activate your minor pieces towards the center, okay? So these five steps is very important to remember, okay? So now, let's go back to the, our second opening. Queen's Gambit declined. And you play knight c3. So before you play the move e3, you need to develop your bishop, right? Now, where do you want to develop the dark square bishop? When you develop this piece, try to develop to an active square, okay? Let's see. Yes. Where can you? F4 or G5. Absolutely. Both moves you can play, but I recommend you play bishop G5 here because bishop on G5 is very active and it's going to be putting pressure, okay? You go here and now black castles. You play E3. And now next would be to develop the light square bishop and castle. Okay? This is how you want to play against Queen's Gambit decline. You have your minor pieces are, your king is safe, and then the next idea would be to develop the queen, and you develop the queen and put the rooks together, and that way you have the complete development. Okay? So let's go back and review this opening one more time. So white plays d4, d5, c4, e6, and what's the name of this opening when black plays e6? We went over the accepted, right, when he takes. But when he doesn't take, you remember the name for this opening? Yes? Queen's Gambit declined, because he's not accepting the pawn, right? He plays e6, declining it. So it's Queen's Gambit declined. So now, I want to see if you remember the first few moves, okay? So raise your hand if you remember the next move for white here. Remember the setup, just how, how we develop the pieces here? Okay, yes, what's the next move? Knight to c3, knight to f6. You just need to develop your pieces, okay? So now which piece you want to develop next? Raise your hand, yes. Knight to f3, good. He goes here now. Before we play e3, remember? Before you play e3, what do you want to do? Bishop to g5, okay? Now black castles. Now we also want to castle soon. We don't want to keep the king in the middle of the board for a long time. But we have to develop our bishop first to do that. So next move, go ahead. E3, right? Pawn to E3. Now it goes here. Now, where do we develop the bishop in the Queen's Gambit declined opening? In general, it's good for you to know that in Queen's Gambit declined, 
you always develop your light square bishop to the d3 square when you play with the white pieces. Your bishop belongs on d3, usually in this opening. So we play bishop d3, and after he plays b6, next move, go ahead. Castle. Castle, safety of the king. And as you can see, the arrows are showing you the queen will go here next, and then we'll go rook fd1, rook ac1, and white just completed the development. And after that, you can try to attack. But try not to attack. It's very important you remember the steps, okay? Try not to attack too early because your attack not going to be very successful. You need to have better development so you can have a successful attack. Yes? What? Uh, well, it depends. Either you attack with the pawns. If you have opportunity to advance the pawns, you do that. If you don't have that opportunity, you try to activate your minor pieces. But remember, you want to go towards the center. Very important, OK? All right, let's move on to the third opening. So, so far we did Queen's Gambit accepted and declined. The third opening I want to show you is this opening. And let's see if you know this opening. Very popular opening, actually. One of the most popular opening nowadays, the top players, a lot of them, they play this opening. So black plays c6 d4, d5, c4, c6. Raise your hand if you know this opening. Anybody familiar with this opening? OK. So it's, it's a new opening for you. So it's called Slav Defense. OK? Slav Defense. The third opening, it's Slav Defense. Idea behind this opening, black tries to protect the center. And the, the most simple way to play in this opening, and, try, and you will have a slightly better position, is the line that I like to play. In fact, when I play in tournaments and somebody plays the Slav defense against me, I, take on, I play this line. I take, it's called exchange variation of the Slav defense, OK? So you take, he takes. Now you develop your knights. As I mentioned earlier, knights before bishops, right? So we just develop. And again, before we play this move, we need to get the bishop out. But remember, in this opening, your bishop actually belongs on f4, not on g5. In Queen's Gambit de decline, we played bishop g5. But in the Slav defense, your bishop belongs on f4, because now you will control many important squares on this diagonal. Okay. So remember, Queen's Gambit decline, the bishop belongs on g5. In a Slav defense exchange variation, you put the bishop on f4. Okay? I will review this with you. So now, black has few possibilities how to play here. He can play a6, bishop f5, or e6. And now, you play e3. Bishop e7. You develop your bishop to d3. castles, your castle. And again, you have, you finish step number three after you castle. Then y you have an open file. And if you see an open file, you want to put your rook on that file, OK? So next step will be to play rook c1. And you can again put your queen only two here. Like, for example, if you place here. You can just put the queen on e2, a6, a3 to control the square, because the next idea is to play rook c2 and put the other rook to c1. So you double up your rooks on a c file. And white has a slightly better position here. The main idea why, because if you see this bishop is more active here than the bishop on d7. Bishop on d7 is very passive for black. But your bishop, your light square bishop, it's more active here. OK? So your idea will be to play this way against this opening and rook c2 and double up the rooks. So let's go back and go over this line again. It's a new opening for you. So let's start again. d4, d5, c4, c6. Now, what is the name of this opening? You should know. What's the name? No, not, this is not the Queen's Gambit. It's a new one, the third opening. 
Absolutely. This is a Slav defense, okay? And which variation we play in, against the Slav defense? And by the way, if, you, if you're thinking of learning some openings, uh, you can actually uh, play d4. You can, uh, if, you know, if you like to learn d4, you can play this, uh, this lines against the Queen's Gambit, accepted, declined, or Slav defense. So, but which variation we play against the Slav defense? You remember? Yes. Yes, that's the move. But uh, you remember the name? I mentioned the name of this line. OK, let's see. OK. Mm. When you take, what do we call when you take something? Right. Exchange, right? You exchange variation of the Slav defense. Now, after you take, now next step is to develop your pieces, right? And let's see if you remember how to develop here and which pieces we develop first, OK? Minor. Huh? Minor. Minor, OK. Where? Where do we develop? Minor pieces, sure. <coughs> you want to develop the knights. Remember, knights before bishops. OK, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, which piece? OK, so knight f3, right? Excellent. So it goes knight f6. Continue. Very good. Now, next. Bishop to f4. Bishop f4. Remember, in this opening, the bishop belongs on f4, OK? In a Slav defense, exchange variation, the bishop belongs on f4. Very important to remember, OK? Because if you put the bishop somewhere else, you're probably not going to have much advantage. So remember, to put the bishop on f4. Now I place e6. Next move. What is the next move for white? Because white also wants to finish his development so he can castle. So what's the next move you need to do? On to Very good. Next. You want to try? OK. Now, you want to castle, right? But you can't do that right away yet. So you need to develop your bishop, light square bishop. And remember, also, in this opening is the same as the queen's gambit declined. Your light square bishop belongs on d3. Remember, in the Slav defense exchange variation, also the bishop belongs on d3. So it goes here, castle. And what is the best move for white now? Yes? Castle. Castle, very good. When you see an open file, what do you do when you see an open file? Which piece belongs to an open file? Rook. rook. So you put the rook on the open file. Now, next. Move the queen to e7. e2. E2. Okay? Remember, the notation, it's, if you remember, this is going to be very easy for you. 1 and 2, it's always for white. Okay? White pieces go 1 and 2, black pieces go 7 and 8. OK? So when you set up a board, make sure 7, 8 is for black and 1 and 2 for white, OK? To keep a good notation. So next, next step is we want to double up the rooks on a C file, right? We want to do this move and here. But we play this move first. Why do we play this move? Who can tell me what's the idea behind this move? Why I play this move first and, for example, I don't play this immediately. There is a detail here that you need to know here. OK, yes. In the back, yeah? Excellent. Very good. If you play immediately, rook c2, very good point. You play knight before. And now, what do we call this idea in chess? Continue. Fork. Fork, because now you bring the knight and now attacking the rook and a bishop. So it's a not a good idea to play this move. That's why I played a3 first. So I control this square. So when I play rook c2, he cannot play knight b4. Now, a3. And let's go. We stop here, but let's go a couple of more moves. And let's see if you remember the next two moves here for white. Yes, continue. Rook to c2 now. Very good. And now he plays here. And now. The final move you need to play here, right? So let's see. Yes, in the back. Yeah. Um, 
here or here? Here. Because uh, you want to put the rook here because that's why we play this rook up. So we can double the rooks, OK? When you have two rooks on the same file, you double the rooks. And very important because this is the open file. So if we put this rook somewhere else, let's say we put the rook here, it's not going to be a very good idea because, look, the rook is not going to be very effective because it's blocked. So you usually want to put the rook on an open file. It's very important. And if, let's say, also same thing goes here, rook will be a little bit better placed here because with some potential, maybe in the future, to play b4, b5. But uh, rook fc1 is your best move. And white is slightly better. But I mentioned this, why white is slightly better. I don't know if you remember. The main idea, main reason why white is slightly better is? Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, gets to go first. That's important because when you start the game with white, you have advantage. But I'm talking about specifically in this position, in this position. There is a reason why white is slightly better because everything looks kind of similar. It's kind of symmetrical also. But there is one piece that I have. It's m more active than the piece that black has, and that piece is bishop. which bishop? Absolutely. If you look at the position, look at the, the possibilities of this bishop compared to the bishop for black. Black bishop doesn't have any squares to go to. So it's very passive. Sometimes the evaluation of the position could change by just one piece here. If you have an active piece and your opponent has a, the passive piece, it's an advantage for white, OK? So this is a Slav defense. And remember, Slav defense is the opening and exchange variation, OK? Remember that, OK. OK, the next opening we're going to do, knight f6, c4, g6. This is another very popular opening, bishop g7. Anybody familiar with this opening? It's probably one of the most popular opening in chess against d4, especially as a defense. And uh, one of the best players, Gary Kasparov, used to play this when he was playing actively his best defense against d4. So anybody familiar with this opening? OK. So this opening called King's Indian Defense. OK? King's Indian Defense. So against this system, there are many different ways how white can play here. But I will show you a system that is very simple, and it's easy to play. And also, you can obtain a slightly better position. Again, any, all these lines that I'm showing you, actually, this is how I play against this opening. So that's why I'm very familiar with uh, these lines here. So you play knight f3, castles, and you play bishop g5. This line is the King's Indian defense is the opening. And the line is called smyslov Petrosian system, OK? Because it's named after two world champions, Smyslov and Petrosian. They played a lot this system. So it's named after these two great players. So you play bishop g5. And you should be already familiar with this idea, because before we play this move, in most of our openings, we get the bishop out first, right? So we don't have a passive bishop here. So you play bishop g5. He plays d6. You play e3. Pay close attention, because there is a very nice trap. Then you can win some games if you, if you know this idea here. Black goes here. Now in this opening, actually, you don't put the bishop here. In a king's Indian defense, when you play the smyslov petrosian system, your bishop actually belongs only two. So there are differences for you to know. Like in, for example, qu Queen's Gambit declined and Slav defense, bishop belong in d on d3. But in this opening, we play bishop e2. So there are differences that you need to know. And now, c6. The most natural move is to castle. But you play this move first, because your queen actually belongs on c2 in this opening. But at the same time, you set up a trap. And now. If black is not careful, 
he can fall into this trap and get checkmated or lose a pawn. So he plays h6, bishop g5, and in this opening, very often, black tries to win this bishop, try to force the bishop to go back here and go here, and try to exchange this bishop so he can have the pair of the bishops, OK? So when he plays knight h5, this is a blunder now. Now, let me give you a few minutes to think here. Let's spend a minute or two. Why to play? Can you find the tactical idea? You're going to either checkmate him or win a pawn and get a winning position here. OK, <coughs> think about it. If you, if you think you know it, just double check your answer. I will check right now. So this is the trap now. Black already walked into the trap. OK, yes. Bishop to d6. If you do that, but then he takes, no? See, he's defending it. So that's why we can't do bishop d6 here. It's something different here. OK, yes. You want to bring the bishop here? You could do that, but this will be just a normal move for you to play, right? Here you have something much stronger. You have much stronger. Just, just raise your hand, OK? OK, good. OK, so it's a tactical idea, OK? We're not just making a normal move. It's a tactical idea that you need to find. OK, in the back, yeah? Excellent. Knight <laughs> nine, nine g5. OK. OK, let's, let's see now why this is a strong move. This is a very strong move. In fact, I've played a lot of games in this opening, and many times I've had the chance actually to win, a game, win games like this in blitz chess, and sometimes even in real tournaments, actually. Because if opponent is not familiar with this idea, he can very easily fall into this trap here. And now, knight g5. Let's see now what's going to happen. If he takes the knight, you simply take the knight. And now you win a pawn. And also position of the black king is now very weak. Because now the position is open here. This pawn is weak. And you have very strong attacking chances. And if he doesn't take the knight, you have a question? Well, yeah, OK. just. Uh, yeah, so this is good. You're up a pawn here, okay? But this is probably the best thing he can do. And if he tries to take the bishop, thinking, okay, let me take this bishop first. Let me take the bishop first, and then I take the knight. So it looks like he will win a piece. But now this one is already a big blunder. Yeah. And now, white to play. Queen to h7, very good. Checkmate. See? See, one inaccuracy, and you can win a game very quickly here by knowing this trap in the King's Indian defense. OK? So that's why you want to play like this in this opening. It's a good setup in general. Even if he doesn't uh, you know, go for this you know, trap, you, know, you still have a comfortable position here. I will show you, let's say, if he doesn't play this, for example, he plays e5, your idea is very simple. You castle. Then you play rook fd1, rook ac1, and you complete the development again. All these openings I'm showing you, you're finishing your development. And then after that, you try to go for the attack. So for example, here, you will go queen, rook fd1, rook e8, rook ac1. I have been playing this, uh, this uh, Smyslov Petrosian setup maybe close to 20 years already in the tournaments against this opening. So I played uh, maybe close to 100 games in this uh, opening. OK? All right, so let's go back and review this system. It's uh, one of the most popular defenses uh, against d4, OK? So d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. At this point, at this stage of the game, we don't even know the name of the opening yet, because 
he could play bishop g7, which will be the king's Indian defense. But he can also play this move, d5, which is going to be a different opening, Grunfeld defense. Another very popular opening against this, against d4. So that's why at this point I didn't say it's a king's Indian yet. So as soon as he plays the bishop on g7, we know that this is already king's Indian defense. And now, you remember how we play. Let's see if you remember the setup now with the white pieces here. How we develop the pieces here for white. Continue. We move the bishop. Remember, what do we do usually in the openings, right? The openings I'm showing you normally which pieces come out first. Knights usually come out first and then the bishops come in, right? So the move is? F3, castle. Now the next move. Okay, go ahead. Pawn to e3. Is, we have to play this move, but we have to do something first, remember? If we play pawn to e3 immediately, our bishop will be blocked. So we always want to get this bishop out first in our openings. We get this bishop out first, and then we play that. Yeah. Very good. And after you play this move, do you remember the name for this system? It's named after two world champions. What's the name of this system? Yes. Smyslov is the Russian world champion, Vasily Smyslov. And the second is the uh, world champion from Armenia, where I'm originally from. You remember his last name? World champion number nine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, very good. So Smyslov, Petroshin, okay? So because they, uh, the reason it's called uh, this way, this line, because both players, they played a lot this system. That's why, you know, they call Smyslov, Petroshin uh, play uh, system here. So Bishop G5, D6. Now continue. What is the next move for white? Okay. Not yet, not yet, remember? You gotta get the pieces out first. Queen C2 is coming up a little bit later. Okay, go ahead. E3. E3. So remember, don't play E4 here. You know, because you know, if you play E4, this is now it's already you play something different. Okay. So you play with the system that I'm showing you. Okay. E3. This system. Now black goes knight bd7. Continue. Ah, uh, now let's see if you remember now where your light square bishop belongs in this opening, see? The other two openings I show you, bishop belonged on a different square, but now here, yes? E2. Very good. Bishop belongs on e2 here. The reason it belongs here, because if you put the bishop on d3, in general, against the fianchetto bishop, bishop is not very effective here, because it's kind of going to be attacking this pawn, but this pawn is just protected. It's always protected by h7 and f7, so it's not very effective here. And that's why we play bishop e2 in this system. Now I play c6. The most natural move here is to castle. But we don't do that yet here. We play another developing move and set up the trap. Let's see. Yes? Not sure? Okay, go ahead. Queen to d2. d2? I mean, Think about uh, it. D1. d1. What? Queen 2? Queen. Queen is on d1 already. You're close. You're close. Yes? C2. C2. Okay? You want to put the queen on C2, remember. Now, uh, it's not like we're playing this move just only hoping for the trap. We are still making a good move, and next move we're going to castle. But we also, you know, looking forward to this possibility. If it starts attacking your bishop, h6, now this is the, tr the trap. What do you do now? Do you take the knight on f6 or you retreat here? Okay. You retreat, right? Now I place g5, attacking the bishop. Yes? Then you put the bishop on d3. Very good. Now, when your opponent plays these two moves, it's a very good chance now he's going to go for the trap, okay? Because, you know, usually chess players, when they push your bishop back on g3, they, they do this with this idea to go here, to 
to try to get your bishop. So it's a very uh, good chance now they're going to play this move. And as soon as they play this, this is where you do the tactical idea to checkmate him or win a pawn. Okay, let's see. Yes. Knight h5. Wait, he, he played knight h5. g5. Knight takes g5, right? You take the pawn. Now, he has two options. His best option is to take. And after bishop takes h5, he's down a pawn. But his also position of the king is very weak. So he's, you know, in big trouble here. But, and if he takes your bishop, what do you do? Now, what do you do if he takes? Yes? You could take the knight back, but you have something better. You have something better. Okay? Queen? Yeah, yeah. Queen to h7, checkmate, right? It's a checkmate because he cannot take it because the knight is protecting it, okay? So it's very important to remember. King's Indian defense. So let's go back. Now, let's review the line. If let's say he doesn't play, you know, he doesn't have to always play this idea and uh, lose because of the trap. Let's say he plays the normal move here. What do we do now next? Because your king is in the middle of the board, right? You have to make sure the king is safe, right? You cannot just keep the king there. Yes? Castle. Very good. Safety of the king is very important. Now, he plays here. I have a question for you. Did you finish the development here already? Can we start the attack? No. 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 Which pieces we need to develop still? Um, the rooks. Rooks. Okay, very good. Now, where do we want to develop the rooks? It's, uh, this is actually uh, uh, not so easy to determine when you're playing, because sometimes it could be a little bit confusing to see, okay, where do I really put these rooks? So, but in this position, you put the rook on Rook fd1, very good. So he plays here. Next move. Yes? No, I have a question. Okay. No. Um, if you are playing against the computer, uh -huh. uh, do they program the computer to follow those mail out, or Sometimes. defense, and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Is the I computer following that program? So if you make all these moves, the computer is going to react exactly the way the well uh, to a certain point it's hard to say it depends on uh, uh, what type of computer you're using it's, it's, it depends who is developer. yeah how much how much chess monsters are helping them yeah so it depends how strong the computer you play if you play a very strong computer like a strong engine yeah they're not gonna fall for the trap okay. they're not but the first few moves it's it's gonna happen they, they're gonna play king's Indian. it's a perfectly fine opening so you play this move, and then the next move is, yes? Yeah. So the reason we put the rooks here, I was going to mention here, that it's not so easy to see where really belongs, you know, where do we put the rooks here, because we can take here, right? For example, if he makes a move, potentially we can take, take, and now our rook is already on an open file, okay? So that's why. You want to put the rook there because after capture, capture, your rook is already on an open file. Okay. Okay. Very good. So there are there are many more openings that I want to work with you, but maybe next time we will continue from where we are right now. Today we did four different openings. So let's do a quick review of which four openings we covered today. Like I mentioned, there are ten openings. So next class we're going to do that. I want to do now a little bit different positions with you also, okay, at the end. So the first opening we did was, he takes, and what's the name of this opening? Raise your hand. If you remember the opening name, raise your hand, yes. Queen's Gambit Accepted. Queen's Gambit Accepted, very good. Second opening we did was, Queen's Gambit, when they don't accept. You're close. Decline. Okay? They decline. Yeah? Queens can be declined. Now, the third opening is C6. Another very popular opening. Let's see. Yes? Yeah. It's, I asked her. Yeah. Slav defense. Correct? And the 
fourth opening today we did is King's Indian Defense and we played the Smyslov Petrosian setup against this opening, okay? Okay, very good. Uh, you have a question? No? Okay. All right, that's fine. I thought you raised your hand. Okay. Now, we're going to do some positions, okay? Let me change this. If I set up this position here, what would be your first move here? Yes. Here? Seven. Fork. You fork the king and a queen. And you win the queen and your upper piece in the end game. So you will be winning. Okay, very good. So that's your idea you're trying to do here. Maybe this will be a hint for you. But okay, just first one will be a little bit easier. But okay, why to play now? Try to think how you can make this idea work. Okay? Okay, check your answer. Let's give you a little bit more time to think. White to play and win a piece. What can you do here? See, you cannot play this move right away here. Because if you go here, he's just going to take. So it's not going to work. What can you do here? Okay, yes. Not sure? Okay, yes, go ahead. Queen b8, it's okay. Yeah, this is, you know, a check. You check and I go here and uh, you, you you made a move, but you're not winning here. It's just uh, you, you gave me a check, okay? But you have something very, very nice idea you have. Okay, I see lots of hands. Excellent. Yes, go ahead. Very good. Queen takes f6. Nice combination. You always have to look for this kind of ideas. You sacrifice your queen for the bishop. Seems like, wait a minute, he's just going to take, right? And you lost your queen for the bishop. It's a two-move combination, OK? You sacrifice your queen, but you eliminated the defender of the e7, very important square, right? And after that, continue. Very good. Knight e7 check, forking the king and queen, and he has to come up. Knight takes d5, white is winning, okay? So the idea, the theme for this is called removing the defender, okay? You remove the defender in this position. Defender is the bishop. So you sacrifice your queen to remove the defender, and then you follow it up with a knight e7 move, okay? Okay. White to play and win. One thing I want to mention to you, if you look at the position of the king, look at this pawns. Your original squares, and he doesn't have an escape square for his king. So that means there are some ideas for, for some potential back rank checkmate ideas you have. Okay? But in order to do a back rank checkmate, you need to deflect a piece. Very important piece here. So how can you do that? There are many ways you can try to attack this piece, but only one way effectively to deflect it that will result into winning a piece at least. Think about it a little bit. Don't rush. If you think you know it, try to double check your answer and try to look for a defense also. We try to find the best attacking move, but we need to also find a defense. Somehow, if you deflect this piece, right, you can take the rook and checkmate. So that's the idea that you're trying to do here. OK, let's see. Raise your hand if you think you have this idea. This is a difficult one. It's not easy to see the idea, but you can find it. You have to look at the entire board, OK? Don't just focus on one side of the board. Look at the entire 64 squares, yeah? Okay, first move. Let's see. Go ahead. Queen to f4. Queen to f4. I mean, this is a deflection you're trying to do, but I don't. I'm not forced to take the queen because if I take, 
the idea of the deflection is rook takes rook checkmate. But I'm not forced to take, I can just simply go back. See? And you're not winning material. So you have something better. You got the right idea, but now find a better square for your queen that will result into winning some material, okay? There is a better square to do that. Okay, yes, in the back, yeah? Okay, let's see, you're, not, you're, you're ready? Uh-huh. Queen to f6, here? But here's the pawn. Pawn is guarding that square, yeah? So not not quite going to work. Okay, yes? Yeah. Here? Here? Aha, uh -huh. okay, this is also, this is also an interesting idea, but again, this is not going to force me to take the queen. If I take the queen, the idea works. Checkmate, but again, this is not going to force me. I can just go back here, and you're not winning material, okay? Yes? Excellent, that's the right move. Queen b7. Now, you put the queen here because not only now attacking the queen, you're also now putting pressure on the knight. So, if he takes the queen, what are you going to do? Checkmate. Checkmate. Rook takes d8. And if he doesn't take the queen, let's say he moves back to defend his last rank. Now, in this line, you just win a piece. What do you do to win the piece here? <coughs> what do you do to win a piece here? It's the move order is very important, okay? The move order is very important here. Yes? Why the queen takes Well, if you take you want to take immediately or you need you want to do something first? Because look, if you take immediately, I take your rook. So you need to do something first. You make an in between idea. Yes. Take the knight immediately. Aha, uh -huh. so it's very important, you know, before you rush to take the piece, make sure you find the, yeah, go ahead. Well, if you take queen takes queen, he goes here. And now he managed to survive without losing any material here. So you want to do something else here first. Yes. You could do that, but now your queen is under attack, right? You, the idea is to win this knight. Idea is to win the knight, but first, first you need to do something. Yes. Well, no. Well, bishop e2 again. I mean, see, bishop e2. If I take the queen, yes, you can mate, but I will take check. In between move, check. And you need to find an in-between move. I eliminate your knight and then I take the queen. Okay? So in this position, you actually need to find the in-between move first so you can win this knight. You can't take it right away yet. So, yes. Queen to a6. No, queen a6, he can take. He can take. Because the knight is protecting the queen. Okay? <laughs> you could go <laughs> rook to a1. It's really simple idea, actually. You're trying to find more difficult ideas here. Try to look for a simple idea instead of a difficult. Just look simple idea. Let's see. Simple idea first, and then you take the knight to make sure nothing is hanging. Okay? Let's see. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, okay, great. <laughs> really, you found the more difficult ideas. Now just take, check. Now you force him to take. And now Yay. you take the piece. And you're up a piece, okay? Um, how about bishop to a6? Wh when? Right here, bishop 
to f y bishop to a6. Here? Yeah. Well, the, the thing is he'll take your rook with the check. And then he takes the queen and block his upper rook. So, yeah, we just take, okay? So we take first on d8, make sure our rook is not hanging, we, he takes back, and then we take the knight, okay? And white is up a piece, winning, all right? Let's do this again, this idea. This is called deflecting, deflecting the defender here. So what is the first move here? Okay? Very good, queen b7. Now, if he takes, continue, what do you do if he takes? Continue, yeah. Checkmate, good. Now, if he goes back, the difficult move here, let's see. What do you do first? Okay. Rook takes rook, rook, takes rook check. He has to take, and now, okay, queen takes knight, white is upper piece, upper bishop, okay? So it's a winning end game, okay?